What up everyone, welcome to another memory tips video. My name is Nelson Dells, four time USA memory champion and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to remember numbers. So the thing with numbers is that they're hard. A lot of people have difficulty remembering numbers for some reason. It's because numbers are so abstract, right? They're these symbols that represent a number, but beyond that, they're kind of just a symbol. Individually, these symbols, these numbers, are meaningless. So the goal with numbers, first and foremost, is to give numbers meaning. Well, how do we do that, Nelson? I'm gonna show you, viewer. First thing we need to memorize numbers is a system. We need some way of converting those difficult abstract symbols, digits, numbers, into something that we can process and then turn into something that we can imagine or visualize. And the easiest things to visualize are words. So we need a system that'll turn numbers into words. And to be able to construct words, we need letters. So I have the perfect system for you. You'll be memorizing numbers in no time. I'm gonna need some tools. Let's go. This is something called the major system. What it'll do is turn each digit, zero through nine, into a consonant sound. Zero is an S or a Z sound. One is a T or a D sound. Two is an N. Three, M. Four is an R. Five is an L. Six, J, ch, soft, G sound. Seven is a K, K, or a hard, G sound. Eight is an F, or a V. Nine is a P, or a B. So you need to memorize this first. Let's start with zero, That's the Z, right? T or D, one downstroke. When you draw a T or a D, you go down. Same with the N, you have two downstrokes. M is three downstrokes. If you flip the three over, you get an M. Four ends in R. Five, that's an L, right? Five fingers gives you an L. If I draw a J like that, kind of looks like a backward six. Seven, if I draw a capital K, look at that, that's two sevens back to back. If I draw a cursive F, it looks like an eight. Finally a nine, flip it, I get a P. If I flip that, we got a B. Okay. So let's try a number. Let's choose, say, 54. Five is that L, right? R is the four. So we have LR. Now that opens a bunch of possibilities where we can place the vowels before or in between or after, whatever. We can come up with a bunch of words. Lure, lawyer, layer, layer, Laura. And remember, these all go by sound. So even though a word like lawyer has the A-W-Y-E in between the L and the R, you're thinking, okay, those aren't really vowels, although it is a vowel sound. The sound is all that matters, right? So lawyer, the main consonant sounds you hear are the L and the R. So when you hear lawyer or when you see lawyer, you're gonna decipher those two consonant sounds into letters representing five, four. Now, that number is going nowhere in your memory unless you attach it to something. So depending on what you're trying to memorize, if it's a sequence of numbers, we'd have to use maybe your body method or you'd use a memory palace, which I've talked about in other videos. Or if you're using something like you're trying to remember a year or a pin code or a birthday, very short numbers that have to be attached to someone or some fact or something. That's a different process as well. And that's probably easier. Let's start with a few examples of how to remember small numbers to singular facts. Let's go. So the first thing I want you to picture is a burger, a hamburger. This hamburger has arms and he's knocking, like you knock on the front door, on a tick, like a tiny little tick, right? So this hamburger is knocking on a tick. So when I say burger, you think knock tick. If I say knock tick, you can tell me it was a burger. So it works one way or the other. The image is complete together, but one links to the other back and forwards. The next one is really easy. What I want you to picture is someone really high up just hanging. Now they're hanging by their nose. Their nose is what's holding them up 
they're hanging from their nose and it's a game. That's the important thing. Hanging by your nose, it's a game. All right, the next one, I want you to picture, this is a very simple image, trading. So you're trading with someone a dog cage. So you have this big wiry dog cage, maybe there's a dog inside, maybe it's filthy. And what you're doing is you're trading that dog cage back and forth with someone. Then you give it to them, they give it back to you. All right, the next one, I want you to imagine petting, rubbing your hand against a door that has fumes coming out of it. So maybe you're petting this door and on the other side, maybe there's a fire, maybe there's some gas that's leaking and there's fumes just emanating out of the sides, the cracks of the door. Pet, door, fume. All right, so the next one, I want you to picture a will. So you have this will with all your last wishes and you're on top of a tower and you lose it. You just drop it. Will, tower, lose. So quick review, we have the burger with the knocking on the tick, hanging by your nose, it's a game, trading a dog cage, petting a door with fumes coming out, and then finally, we had a will that you're on a tower, you lose it, now, so check this out. The five things that you memorized were some of the tallest buildings in the world and their heights. Now here's how it goes. The first word was a word to help you remember the name of the building. Those other two words represented a four digit number, which represents the height in feet. So the first one was a burger. It's the Burj Khalifa. And the height of it, knock, tick. If we break that down into its consonant sounds, knock, which is N and a K sound, that's two and a seven. Tick, which is a one and another seven, is 2717. The Burj Khalifa is 2,717 feet high. Whoa. Tallest building in the world, actually. Next on our list was Hang, Hang, Shang, the Shanghai Tower, which is in China, Shanghai. And you were hanging by your nose, and it was a game. The N and the S from nose, that's a two and a zero. And then game was a seven, is a K or a hard G. So that's a seven, and M for game is a three. So we have 2,073 feet high is the Shanghai Tower. Next, we have trading, any guesses? One World Trade Center in New York City. This one's actually pretty easy to memorize without a system. The height of it is 1776, a very memorable year in American history. But if you wanna use the system and be consistent, what we had was we were trading the dog cage. So dog cage, D is a one, hard G again is a seven, cage, the cut is a seven, and the soft G is a six, so 1776 feet high. Next we have pet, you're petting something, it's the Patronus Towers in Kuala Lumpur, uh, one of the tallest buildings in the world. What were we petting? A door with fume coming out of it, right? So D is a one, R is a four, that's one four, and then fume is an eight and a three. So one four eight three, 1,483 feet for the Patronus Towers. And finally, the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower. The height of that one, remember, we were at a tower and we lose. So tower is a T and an R, that's a one and a four, and then lose five and a zero. So we have 1,450 feet is the Willis Tower. You can do this to anything you want with dates. Uh, maybe something happened on a certain date, and you memorize the four digit year, you can memorize your pin code, attach it to a picture of your bank or whatever institution that your pin number is attached to. You can do it for a birthday and attach it to the person. The sky's the limits, my friend. Thanks for watching this video. Next time we're gonna dive into how to memorize a really, really, really long list. How do you manage your memory palace for a long list? But for now, I'm out. Stay memorable, thanks for watching. Peace.